How's it going today? I'm here with my WWE Extreme Rules 2018 paper predictions course. Extreme Rules takes place live on the WWE Network as well as here tomorrow night. And overall, like I say, going to Extreme Rules, how ironic of it is it, I should say, that it's called Extreme Rules, yet this is probably the least extreme pay-per-view of the year because there's only, what, three, four matches that have an extreme stipulation to it out of the 12? Like, are you fucking kidding me? I thought Extreme Rules had to require every match have a stipulation, but yet, here we are, 2018, pay-per-view called Extreme Rules, where almost every match has rules to it, so I just think the irony of this pay-per-view is just very ironic, and just the pay-per-view itself it just doesn't even need to happen. It's a definition of a filler show, if you ask me. I mean, there are some matches I am intrigued by. I think there's like three or four matches I do actually really want to see, but besides that, you can definitely tell everything else is filler. It's just there to pretty much fill up space until SummerSlam, so that's honestly how I feel with this pay-per-view. I do think it can be a good show, but it's definitely going to be a very long fucking show, because there's 12 matches, because why not? And there's an Iron Man match in 30 minutes, so this show is probably going to be easily four to five hours long, no doubt. It's definitely going to go over four hours, which is absolutely ridiculous. This show, to me, epitomizes what they need to do, and that is going back to brands with pay-per-views, uh, or just cut it back down, because there's no reason to have 12 matches on a show. It should be no more than eight, honestly, on each show. So, I just... Uh, <sighs> This and Money in the Bank, it's just it's overkill, and they don't need to have these long shows. I don't know who thinks they're a good idea, but they definitely do not need to be happening. So, Extreme Rules, not too excited for, like I said, to fill up a review. Could be a good show, yeah, but I'm not excited. I just don't care if it's a show, honestly. And that's honestly, I feel like most of the pay-per-views nowadays. I honestly do feel like on all these paper predictions, I come out and say the same thing, because it's a recurring thing. They need to change that. So, Extreme Rules, yeah. 12 matches on the show, however, 10 will be on the main show, because we do have a one-hour character show, one-hour prior pay-per-view. Uh, which has two matches on it, uh, Almas and Sin Cara rematch from SmackDown Live this past Tuesday, which is actually a really good match, so I don't mind it happening again. Tables match between New Day and Sanity, hope it's a fun one, so that's the KO show right there. Then, of course, going to a main show, like, which, like I said, has ten matches total. Of course, we'll have the B-team challenging Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt for the Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, Carmella defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Asuka once again, but this time with James Ellsworth in a shark cage above the ring. I don't know if their fascination has been a shark cage the last couple of years, but they need to stop doing them. That's like the third one they've done in the past two years. Let's let's uh, go back to when they, when they never did them, because honestly, who gives a shit about shark cage matches? But yeah, I don't really care too much about that match, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we'll be having uh, Team Hell No reuniting for the first time in over five years. Kane and Dana Bryan taking on the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. That match, I'm honestly am excited for. That's one of the matches um, that intrigued me with this paper, to be perfectly honest. I'm really happy for that. I think it'll be a really good match. And, you know, I kind of wish they had a stipulation to it, like a false counting war or just, you know, no DQ or whatever it may have been. But regardless of no stipulation, uh, like I said, personally, it's one of the matches I look forward to the most. And well, honestly, probably is the match I'm looking forward to the most, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm just happy to see Team Helmut back, so definitely excited to see that match come to fruition. we we'll also be having Shinsuke Nakamura challenging Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. Another match I'm looking forward to, and I know Jeff Hardy is pretty banged up, but hopefully they can uh, uh, still pull through with, the, with a pretty good match with Nakamura here, so that's another match I'm looking forward to. We'll be having Alexa Bliss defending the Raw Women's Championship against Nia Jax in an Extreme Rules match. Which, of course, Ronda Rousey will be at ringside for in the front row. So, I think it's very, very obvious that Ronda Rousey is getting involved. So, uh, I think the only reason why this is an Extreme Rules match is simply for Ronda's involvement. So, not really much more to say about that. Kevin Owens taking on Braun Strowman in a steel cage match. Of course, the whole story of this, of this feud is when Kevin Owens running for Braun Strowman. So, steel cage will be there to pretty much contain Kevin Owens in the ring with Braun Strowman. So, um, I think this will be kind of a comedy match more than anything. So, not really too much to talk about that one. Intercontinental Championship being defended in a 30-minute Ironman match. Dolph Ziggler taking on Seth Rollins. Another match I'm looking forward to on the show. Honestly, this should be the main event, but that's just me personally speaking. Uh, these two have gone there, but awesome match after awesome, ma uh, awesome match after awesome match. So I don't think it'll be a different at Extreme Rules. So definitely, I uh, hope they go out there and just you know steal the show. So cause, because I do think it'll be uh, the best match in the show if you ask me. So definitely looking forward to that one. Finn Balor will be taking on Constable Corbin. So that's a match happening. Uh, AJ Styles defending his WWE Championship against Rusev, uh, which I do think will be a really good match, but, you know, I don't think Rusev really has a chance in Halloween winning championship, so, you know, it takes kind of excitement away, but, I mean, they could shock the world, but, you know, it kind of takes the, the excitement away of a match when you think the guy absolutely has no chance of winning, so I don't really care about the match, to be perfectly honest, and, of course, we have Roman Reigns taking on Bobby Lashley in their big match of the show, which I honestly just do not care for. Um, you know, I just thought the build and everything in this match just gives me no reason to care about it, honestly. So, Extreme Rules is a very whatever card. About three or four matches, like I said, that even piqued my interest at all out of the 12. So, not 
really too good of a sign there, if you ask me, but it's Extreme Rules, who cares, it's the final paper before SummerSlam, so it's basically just to get through the, get through July to get the, to SummerSlam, so, without any wasting more time, let's go ahead and jump right into predictions. Kick off Sin Cara versus Andrade Stan Almas. Given the fact that Andrade Stan Almas is the person they should be building up, I feel like he needs to win here. Even though he did beat Sin Cara on SmackDown Live past Tuesday, which was a pretty damn good match, I just don't see what logical sense it makes for Sin Cara to get the win. I'm not a huge fan of the 50-50 booking, so even if they just continue a few, like there's no reason for Sin Cara to get the win over Andrade Stan Almas. So hopefully it's a good match, we'll get some time, but like I said, my pick is Andrade Cien Almas. Kickoff six man tag team tables match, the New Day versus Sanity. This should be a really fun match. I'm actually looking forward to it. Hopefully, get some time too. I'd like to see this get at least 15 minutes, honestly. But when it comes down to it, you know, Sanity, since the debut, they honestly haven't, haven't been doing that well. They've actually been losing all their matches, so I feel like the best thing here is for Sanity to get the win. Doesn't hurt the New Day at all to lose, especially considering it's a tables match, so it's not like they're getting pinned or anything like that. So I definitely feel like they can definitely afford to get the, get the loss here against Sanity. So hopefully, it's a fun match. Looking forward to it. But in my opinion, the best thing is for Sanity to walk out victorious in this tables match. United States Championship match, United States Champion Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura is fresh off his huge AJ Styles in which he lost every single match to AJ, whether it is a no contest or actually losing. So the best way to rebuttal, rehash, and rebuild Nakamura, in my opinion right now, is for him to win the United States Championship. So he has my pick to win the US Championship. You know, Jeff Hardy's been dealing with some nagging injuries, so I feel like him losing, taking some time off is best thing for him. Hopefully they have a pretty good match. You know, even with the injuries with the uh, with Hardy, I feel like him and Nakamura can still go down a really good match. But yeah, kind of a result. I do expect Shinsuke Nakamura to walk out the brand new United States Champion. Raw Tag Team Championship match. Raw Tag Team Champions Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt versus the B Team. They've been building the B Team up over the last couple months, but honestly, I don't see them winning the Tag Team titles. You know, it wouldn't really surprise me, but I don't see it happening. The Raw Tag Team Division is such garbage right now. Honestly, I don't really care at all who's the Tag Team Champion. So if the B Team wins, cool. If not, I don't really care. Um, hopefully, it's a good match. You know, I don't really think it will be, but hopefully, it, it can deliver in some aspects. But yeah, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, too, walk out still the Raw Tag Team Champions, in my opinion. Steel Cage match, Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. This entire feud has been Braun Strowman, you know, bullying Kevin Owens. And even though it's a Steel Cage match, you know, logically you'd think Braun Strowman wins because he's Mr. Money in the Bank, you know, he's going to be your champion hopefully soon. He's going to win, but honestly, I think Kevin Owens will somehow get the victory. I think whether it's like a comedy thing or just Owens escapes, I think Owens will walk out victorious. But I, but I think uh, Braun Strowman will get the upper hand and just absolutely destroy, uh, destroy Owens afterwards. So even though I am picking Kevin Owens to win, I think Braun Strowman does, does get the last lap and, you know, still beats up Kevin Owens. So hopefully it's a fun little match. But yeah, like I said, I do think uh, Kevin Owens will somehow find his way to... Uh, get a win out of Braun Strowman here. SmackDown Women's Championship match with James Ellsworth suspended above the ring in a shark cage. SmackDown Women's Champion Carmella versus Asuka. I can see Asuka winning and, you know, defending the title against Charlotte at SummerSlam, but, you know, I just, something is just not clicking with me with Asuka winning the championship right now, so I'm going to go ahead and say Carmella wins, retains the championship. You know, James Ellsworth might, you know, somehow sneak something down the ring for a win, but I don't know. I feel like one way or another, Carmella will walk out of this match still the SmackDown Women's Champion. Finn Balor versus Constable Baron Corbin. You know, Corbin's been pretty much getting the upper hand on Finn Balor his entire feud. You know, even pinned him a few weeks ago in a tag team match. So with that being said, you know, Finn Balor has been pretty lacking on the winning side. So him getting a victory over uh, Baron Corbin here definitely, you know, builds momentum and doesn't hurt Corbin by any means. So I think Finn Balor getting the win, that's uh, Definitely is the best decision. Hopefully it's an okay match. Not really expecting too much out of it, but yeah, I do expect Finn Balor to get a win over Constable Corbin here at Extreme Rules. 30-minute Iron Man match for the Intercontinental Championship. Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. To be perfectly honest, I can see this match going both ways. I can see Ziggler retaining, but I can see Rollins winning. But you know what? Honestly, when it comes down to it, I'm going to ahead, go ahead and say Seth Rollins walks out the brand new Intercontinental Champion. I feel like he's going to walk out Champion and face Drew McIntyre for Championship at SummerSlam. I just feel like that's the direction they're going in. You know, I can see a Dean Ambrose returning here and turning on Seth Rollins, you know, to, you know, feud with him. I can see it happening, but I don't know. I just feel like Seth Rollins, or Ziggler's title reign is transitional, and they'll go back to Seth Rollins, like I said, to set up him McIntyre at SummerSlam. So, it'll be a great match, but yeah, I think Seth Rollins will walk out and be Iron Man and Intercontinental Champion. SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Bludgeon Brothers versus Team Hell No. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say Team Hell No walk out the brand new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I feel like them being SmackDown Tag Team Champions throughout the fall is, you know, a smart decision right now. I know it keeps Dana Bryan in a hot position, but not in the main event at the same time, which I think 
which I think is what they want to do. Bludgeon Brothers can go out there, you know, them for the tag team titles. You know, Sanity can go after them. You know, you have a bunch of tag teams lining up that can go after Team Hell No and definitely revitalize the tag team division. So um, it should be a great match. I'm looking forward to it. The, the match I'm looking forward to the most on the show, to be perfectly honest. But uh, can't result. I do expect a shocking twist and Team Hell No becoming the brand new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Extreme Rules match for the Raw Women's Championship. Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. You know, with the Extreme Rules stipulation, you know, Ronda Rousey is going to be that ringside. Definitely, she's definitely going to get involved. And I think her involvement will end up costing Nia Jax. So, my pick will be Alexa Bliss will walk out still the Raw Women's Champion. I think, you know, Ronda Rousey obviously wants Alexa Bliss. So, I think she'll help her, either help her unintentionally or intentionally retain the championship. Thus, setting a matchup at SummerSlam between Bliss and Ronda for the Raw Women's title. I just see that happening. So, I think that's the route they're going. Hopefully, it's an all right match. Their matches have sucked in the past. But, my pick, Alexa Bliss retained the Raw Women's Championship. WWE Championship match, WWE Champion AJ Styles versus Rusev. Easily AJ Styles to retain the WWE Championship. Uh, obviously, Rusev's a filler, if you ask me. I'd be very, very surprised if Rusev walked out with the brand new WWE Champion. You know, I wouldn't really be all for it or against it, but I'm not completely all for it at the same time. I feel like AJ walking the SummerSlam as champion is their current program. Uh, him and Samoa Joe at SummerSlam is probably the, the, you know, probably the idea they're going to go with, so I definitely don't want to, you know, want AJ to be champion to go into that match against Joe. Hopefully it's SummerSlam for the championship. So, should be a damn good match. Good title match. But, like I said, I think Bruce is nothing more than a filler. So, AJ walks out still the WWE champion. And then the main event, Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. You know, I think a lot of people think Roman Reigns is an obvious winner. I think a lot of people think he's going to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam to win the Universal Championship. But, you know what? I'm going to go on a limb and say Bobby Lashley defeats Roman Reigns here. I think Bobby Lashley is yet to get a very big win. And they're kind of, you know, if they want to build up as a big main event player, I think a win over Roman Reigns won't hurt Roman and it'll help build up Bobby Lashley. So I'm going to go out and say Bobby Lashley wins against Roman Reigns. It wouldn't surprise me if Roman gets the win, but I feel like the right thing to do is for Bobby Lashley to win, like I said, to, you know, build his momentum and, and solidify himself as a main event talent on Raw. So hopefully it's a good match. I'm not sure how their styles will honestly mesh well, but like I said, uh, Bobby Lashley to defeat Roman Reigns. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed my WWE Extreme Rules 2018 paper predictions. Like I said, Extreme Rules is live on the WWE Network as well as we tomorrow night. Like I said, not really too excited. Fill up if you ask me. Not really too much going on. Three matches I'm excited for. Besides that, eh, nothing else uh, that piques my interest. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please like below. If you guys like in the comment section, please leave your guys' predictions for Extreme Rules as well in the comment section below. As always, till my review tomorrow night, I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching the video.